name is Carrie. Today I'm going to speak to you about the vocations, namely the priesthood and the religious life. I would like to start with a quote from St. John Vianney. The priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. When you see a priest, think of the Lord Jesus Christ. Vocation simply means a call. This might mean a call to the priesthood, the religious life, or consecrated single life. Your call, whether it to be a priest, a religious sister, to be married, or to be single, is a call from God Himself. Scripture tells us, Be holy, because I am holy. Leviticus 11.44 Since our happiness is found in God, our vocation is going to be that which will make us most happy in life. Now let's talk about the priesthood. The call to the priesthood is lived by those men who have received the sacrament of holy orders. By receiving this sacrament, these men are granted a sharing in the one priesthood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the high priest who has given himself for sins. Because of Jesus' sacrifice of himself, it is at the heart of the priesthood. If it is in the light of sacrifice, in the light of Jesus Christ that one can only begin to understand the true nature of the Catholic priesthood. Jesus calls certain men to be administers of his sacrament, sacraments that provide us spiritual healing and nourishment. He ordained his apostles to preach the gospel, to baptize, and to forgive sins in his name. The apostles were all priests. More so, they could appropriately be called bishops. The word bishop means overseer. Apostles not only ordained new bishops, but they ordained men who would be responsible for administering some of Christ's sacraments, but not all of them. These men are called deacons. The sacrament of holy orders is held by the bishop who can administer all of the sacraments and is charged with leading the diocese to holiness. Since the bishop cannot be at all places at times, he gives a sharing of Christ's priesthood to the priests and the deacons so that they might help him in leading God's children to heaven. With the ordination of a man to the priesthood, a man is given the responsibility of preaching and his ability to confect the Eucharist baptize, forgive sins in the place of Christ. The final degree of the sacrament of holy orders is that of the diaconate. The deacon means servant. The deacon helps the priest in his duties by baptizing, sometimes preaching and proclaiming the gospel, giving communion to the sick and the homebound. And the life of the priest is formed by two promises that he makes to the bishop during his ordination. The first promise is that he may chastise into the service to the people of God by, ref by refraining from marriage so as to be more conformed to the image of Christ and better serve the faithful. The second promise is of obedience to the bishop and his successor. Two things about the priests that point to Jesus are his attire and that he is also called father. The priest wears all black as a sign of the presence of Christ within him who died to, for himself to save for the bride of the church. The white collar that is worn can be seen as a symbol of the slavery of the priest to Jesus Christ. This is because he is really our spiritual father. This is the reason that we call him father, because he is really our spiritual father. Just as our biological fathers raise us, instruct us, and lead us on the path to virtue, so do our spiritual fathers, as they help us grow in the faith and in the way of Jesus Christ. Another vocation is the religious life. It is um, in the religious life a person does not perhaps have the role of celebrating the holy sacrifice of the Mass, but instead sacrificing their whole being. Every religious takes at least three vows. The vow of poverty, the vow of, the vow of chastity, and the vow of obedience. A vow, vow is a solemn promise made to God. 
A vow must be made deliberately and freely. The vow of poverty is where a person promises to imitate Christ, who himself was poor. The vow of chastity is a person promises to be faithful in their marriage to Christ, who is their true spouse. This is why nuns are sometimes called the brides of Christ. The vow of obedience is one that, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, makes the religious. This is because the vow of obedience is a religious promise to be faithful. By these vows, a person becomes consecrated. To be consecrated, it means to be set apart for the service of God. When it comes to vocation, some people say they are discerning. Discerning is a period that, simply put, it's where a person might visit the religious communities, meet with vocation directors, or go out on dates. First, they strive for holiness. Second, they learn to listen to the voice of God through prayer. God is always speaking to us. Third, they are faithful to whatever God is calling them to do that day and in general. There are some misconceptions about the priests. One is, only priests and religious are called to be holy. The truth is that God calls everybody to be holy. Another is, religious brothers and sisters are holier than everybody else. Well, holiness comes from doing the Father's will, and this implies with every grace that He offers all of us. Priests, another, another misconception, is priests and religious do not get married because marriage is bad. God makes no mistakes and everything that he has created is very good. The reason why priests and the religious refrain from entering into a marriage is not because marriage is bad, but because of celibacy is sometimes even spiritually greater. You cannot give yourself a vocation. A vacation, a vacation is first and foremost a gift from God. It is a response to a call received in prayer. No one has the right to claim for themselves any vocation. What is the best way for you to know your vocation? It is to listen to God through prayer. He loves you and will lead you to that vocation, the one that He wants for you if you listen to His word.